Today, General Kobayas will join 44 other distinguished fellows in the Hall of Fame. Throughout his career, General Kobayas has been at the forefront of change, strategic transformation, and leadership. General No Abrigo Kobayas was born in Tukegaro, the capital city of Cagayan province, which is located on the north end of the island of Luzon, the largest island in the Philippine archipelago. General Cobalius was accepted into the Philippine Military Academy in 1976 and graduated as part of the Mapitagan class of 1980. He was appointed as coach of the Delta Company wrestling team and was a member of the Silent Drill Company. Some of his accomplishments include making the Dean's List, winning gold and bronze medals in archery competitions, and achieving a minor A in soccer. In 1980, he completed the Philippine Scout Ranger course. Later, he attended the Infantry Officer Basic course, graduating at the top of his class. Here, he is sharing a moment with his Ranger buddies. A few years later, General Caballas attended the United States Infantry Officer Advanced course at Fort Benning, Georgia, where he was included in the list of outstanding Allied students. During his career, he has progressed through a variety of operational command and staff appointments at the tactical, operational, and strategic levels. General Cobalius commanded the 2nd Scout Ranger Battalion, which personally leads critical missions up front. General Cobalius' leadership brought success to the battalion during combat operations and earned the unit the distinction of Best Maneuver Battalion of the Armed Forces of the Philippines in the year 2000. In 2001, General Cobalius was selected to command a Philippine battalion for peacekeeping under the United Nations Transitional Administration in East Timor. General Cobayas always finds ways to maintain his physical condition by engaging in some form of physical activity no matter where he is. As shown here, he took on the challenge to become a certified diver. General Cobayas later assumed command of multiple brigades, ultimately leading to his posting as a division commander. Here, we see General Cobayas and Lieutenant General Francis J. Wierzynski, commanding general of the U.S. Army Pacific, as they lead the, dele the delegations of their respective armies to the first executive steering group meeting between our two nations. General Cobayas played a key role in the creation of the executive steering group between the United States Army Pacific and the Philippine Army. The purpose of the executive steering group is to bolster the longstanding and close relationship between the armies of the United States and the Philippines. In these photos, clearly displaying lessons learned at the United States Army War College, General Cobayas put into practice the fostering of strategic relationships and cooperation with Vietnam, to your left, and Thailand, to your right. During these occasions, General Cobayas set agreements with counterparts from the Vietnamese People's Army and the Royal Thai Army on bilateral activities. In continuing to enhance regional relationships, we see General Cobayas meeting with his counterpart from the Malaysian Army. During his visit, General Cobalius was conferred the Honorary Maroon Beret and Airborne Wings Award of Malaysia's 10th Parachute Brigade to commemorate the long-standing friendship and alliance between the Philippines and Malaysia. Despite his busy international agenda, General Cobalius has always found the time to promote positive leadership and commitment. Here we see General Cobalius visiting his troops and field commanders. On this occasion, General Cobayas expressed the need to strengthen the Army's non-commissioned officer corps as they are the backbone of the organization. According to General Cobayas, we should further reinforce nationalism and patriotism, and this can be achieved through education and training that focuses on the building of our soldiers' character. According to General Cobayas, the professional growth of our soldiers is a primary concern in the Army, as it is a key part of our program to transform our organization to become more responsive and capable. General Cobayas, thank you for returning to the United States Army War College and joining us today. On behalf of the staff and faculty and the United States Army War College class of 2014, we offer you our deepest congratulations for your designation as the 45th member of our International Fellows Hall of Fame. General Cobayas, General Kukulo, please join me on stage for our Hall of Fame induction. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise as General Tony Kuklo inducts Lieutenant General Noel Abrigo Cobalias into our Hall of Fame. Attention to orders. 
the United States Army War College, Carlisle Barracks, Pennsylvania, in recognition of outstanding military achievement, hereby inducts into the United States Army War College International Fellows Hall of Fame, Lieutenant General Noel Abrigos Caballas, Commanding General of the Philippine Army, a 2000 graduate of the United States Army War College, by order of the Commandant, Major General Anthony A. Kuklo III, dated 22 January 2014. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Major General Anthony Kukulu III, Commandant of the U.S. Army War College, Ambassador Helen Widrow of the Department of State, Colonel John Burbank, Director of the International Fellows Program, faculty and staff of the college, members of Seminars 1, oh. <laughs> students of uh, U.S. War Army War College, Class 2014, distinguished guests, may I also acknowledge my good friends, Mr. and Mrs. Ernie Peña, are with us today. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Thank you for that warm and generous introduction. It feels so good to be back here in Carlisle. I will always remember with fondness my experiences in this place. It was here that for the first time I experienced snow. <laughs> and for the first time, tasted it. Well, that was out of curiosity. I also nearly met an accident after driving on a snowstorm, <laughs> not knowing exactly how to put on the car brakes while moving on ice. <laughs> I also recall being overwhelmed and spending long hours with the reading assignments during the early part of our course. But somehow, I figured out later on how to deal with it. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> You know it very well. Of course, scheming and scanning <laughs> after observing my classmates. Then I had more free time spending my weekends. <laughs> it is also here that I met so many friends. But seriously, as a student here in 2006 up to 2007, I never imagined that one day I will be standing here before an esteemed audience as an inductee to the International Fellows Hall of Fame. I am truly honored for this distinction to be part of an illustrious roster of work college graduates who excelled in their careers. My stint here as a student of the U.S. Army War College came at an opportune time in my military career. At that time, I became part of our Army's program to prepare senior leaders to assume higher levels of command. The professional military education that I received from the college refined my competency in strategic and critical thinking, enhanced my knowledge in the choice of war and strategy, and provided me a better understanding of international relations. My learning here also broadened my appreciation of critical role that land power plays in attainment of national security objectives. I believe all of these skills sharpened my wits and equipped me with the ability to make effective strategic decisions later on in my career. Returning to the Philippines after our, our graduation in 2007, I was designated to command various major units of our army. One of these units is the Unified Command in Western Mindanao. I commanded while confronting foreign and funded extremists in Southern Philippines. I am humbled to say that the education I gained from this college imbued me with a higher level of understanding of complex and multifaceted security issues. I believe this professional leadership competency also made me qualified to be entrusted with the highest command of the Philippine Army. For this, I am truly grateful to the 
U.S. Army War College. Let me also take this opportunity to express my gratitude on behalf of my fellow Filipinos to the U.S. government and the American people and to all our allied countries. Thank you for the support that you extended to my country as we grappled with back-to-back -back calamities. A magnitude 7.2 earthquake and a Typhoon Haiyan in central Philippines that has left over 7,800 pe people dead or missing and caused widespread damage. Just as Haiyan was recorded as the most powerful Typhoon to ever make landfall, the aid from the international community also posted record highs. The massive relief and rehabilitation efforts were supported and, were still being, and are still being supported by donor countries that many of you are representing here. Thank you very much for all your support. Allow me to share more about Typhoon Haiyan and the important roles that our Army performed. The Typhoon hit the central part of the Philippines on the 8th of November last year. The damage was so devastating that no one within the immediate path of the storm, including our Army troops, was spared. The local government's units were unable to function as the first responders, as they themselves became victims. Power was cut off, communications backed down, and roads, bridges, and ports became inaccessible. Our Army went to work. We regrouped and mobilized our ground troops and put semblance of security to a situation that could have otherwise escalated into chaos. Our troops provided the waypoints and communications that apprised the rest of the country on the situation in the areas affected by Haiyan. We cleared roads of debris and continued to secure thoroughfares where army trucks passed through, bringing in much needed relief goods. It is going to be a long, hard road to recovery, but we are confident that the resilient Filipino spirit, coupled with the outpouring help from the international community, can bounce back from this tragedy. Haiyan brought the light, the role that the Philippine Army, and to some extent your country's armies, will play in the future to meet the challenges that climate change has brought. As our army, army forces are dispersed across the island, we, became the, we become the first responders when calamity strikes in the country. Because of this, we continuously enhance our disaster preparedness and response capabilities, which is part of our Army objectives. The roles and challenges that the Philippine Army currently confront continue to evolve and become more complex as we face the threats of terrorism and insurgency, <laughs> the potential effects of natural calamities. We also deal with the strains to the geopolitical security environments in our region. To address these challenges, the Army is implementing strategic initiatives as part of its way ahead. In 2010, we launched the Army Transformation Roadmap, or the ATR. This is a, this is a long-term 18-year program aimed at transforming the Philippine Army into a better, more dynamic, more capable, and more professional organization committed to its core purpose of serving the people and securing the land. We believe that now is the time to institute widespread genuine reforms in the Army, complementing the trust to modernize the whole armed forces of the Philippines through the acquisition of advanced defense systems. This transformation roadmap, which is anchored on good governance and performance excellence, will bring about an Army that will be capable to confront assess threats now and in the future. We are also currently implementing our internal peace and security plan, or the IPSP. This is a paradigm shift in dealing with the problem of insurgency. Recognizing that the causes of this problem are deeply rooted, born from poverty and social inequality, this peace and security plan we call Bayanihan, which literally means working hand in hand to get a task done, is a strategic plan to finally put an end to insurgency in the remaining affected parts of our country. IPSP Bayanian involved the support of all stakeholders using the whole of nation approach to address the underlying root causes that foment dissent. And while our military capabilities can win the battles of insurgency, we believe that this innovative approach of the Bayanihan will win the peace for our people. 
In line with this, strategic initiatives, our army is also part of the whole armed forces of the Philippines in enhancing our international defense and security engagement. We put primacy in security, primacy in enhancing alliances with other countries to protect our common interests. In our region, the Philippines is a strong member partner of ASEAN. We also place in high regard our existing mutual defense treaty with the United States. Furthermore, we continue to fulfill our international commitment with the United Nations by sending a contingent or contingents of peacekeepers to Golan Heights in uh, Liberia and Haiti. The increasing complexity of the security challenges that the world faces today necessitates a stronger defense and security relationship among countries. We should therefore continue to build on and nurture the friendships and close ties that we have established here in this institution. Let us be one in the pursuit of a more stable and peaceful global security environment through a better understanding of the complexities of the world that we live in. This is, after all, what the U.S. Army College advocates. In closing, I say that in 2006, in 2026, I was thankful the opportunity to study and, release, and release the extraordinary learning experience here at the U.S. Army War College. Today, I am more than grateful to be invited here and accorded this honor. On behalf of my family, I express my sincere thanks to the U.S. Army War College and its leadership under Major General Anthony, Anthony Cuculo for my induction to the International Fellows Hall of Fame. May, glad, may God bless this, the, Army, the U.S. Army War College May God bless our countries and may God bless our friendship. Thank you very much and good day to all.